Hey guys, welcome back to Auction Not Included, Clay's Amazing Space Colony Simulator Extraordinaire. My name is Twitchy, and the last time we got ourselves a hot polluted oxygen vent loosed on the environment so we can start melting down all of this ice around here for some water. But we've had a little bit of a problem, a problem that I did not foresee. Even though we have got 5 kilograms of pressure down here, the, uh, the 500 grams of pressure above it has unfortunately locked us in. The problem that we we really have is that we don't have the super hard digging skill yeah there's a skill that's what it's called up over here but thankfully all of our duplicates at the end of last episode earned themselves a skill point meaning that Carrie that that Madame Curie can come up here and um, suddenly dig all this apart from it's it's not gonna do it. oh it's super duper hard digging oh no hmm are we gonna skill scrub is that a thing we do? We need another skill point. Okay, that honestly took a lot longer than I thought it would. Let's come up over to Madame Curie here and go boom, boom, boom. Super duper hard digging. Love it. Okay, despite the fact that she is starving to death, Madame Curie's decided that she needs to come in and dig these orders out now. That's fine. I'm I'm okay with that. As long as food can be sorted eventually, it, it really does need to get going. But hopefully also with this being exposed, we're going to get uh, the, the water melting, as I but also the analysis of this geyser here so we can know like when it's active how long for what sort of return we can expect from this more importantly how much heat it's going to put into our colony okay one of our first big issues or at least things to watch out for is where the plank gets completely burnt by the 500 degree uh, polluted oxygen that is coming out of here I don't know. I don't know. We seem to be doing okay. The temperature is kind of evening out. Well, there is definitely 200 degrees kicking around there, but the carbon dioxide, very, very chill, so it should be fine. Uh, Planck's temperature is about 30 degrees. I mean, that's not, that's not too bad. Could be worse. So the heat map is... Um very one-dimensional we've just got this one bar of hot and then it all just kind of dissipates into the environment very very quickly oh and and this thing on top of the farm we'll we'll just just get rid of that oh yeah things are definitely starting to get a little bit melty around here so i've put in a whole bunch of orders just to have a drainway coming down towards what i'm gonna be have as a secondary tank over there tertiary this will be my third tank right yeah okay so we're just gonna throw in a whole bunch of dig orders like this oh you see that neutronium there i didn't just like so and then we can start building another stockpile of water over here and then we'll have two filtration systems feeding inwards i mean it'll probably end up being just one filtration system but you know the idea is there but also you might notice that we do not have any research selected i'm going to come up for the smart storage here not just so that we can use the auto sweeper to try and get ourselves some automation going on with like the farms and the hatcheries and stuff like that but actually what i'm really really after is the automatic dispenser uh, it will allow us to store all our materials in one tile as opposed to having this ever growing selection of storage bins around not the easiest of jobs digging a drainage ditch but Madame Curie is there to get it done. I, I just wish we'd done it before all the polluted water was covering her literally head to toe. I don't think hypothermia is going to be her biggest problem at the end of this. Oh I forgot the wheeze warts came out with radiation. Uh, Madame Curie just did the, the whole radiation face so I was like oh no. Uh, do we want to let the water through yet or do we want her to dig this other tunnel? I think we're going to dig the other tunnel out first. There's plenty of space in this sort of secondary storage chamber if you will. Oh well it turns out Madame Curie went and dug it out in the morning anyway. Okay that, that's fine we, we can live with that. It's not the worst thing that could have happened. Uh, what would have been is if she wasn't able to dig across this way. Well, looking at the stress in the top left, this job has not been nice on Madame Curie, but she's doing well. She's got the tank all dug out. We've got a mi nice mixed water supply coming in. At some point, we'll be building pumps here and we'll be getting a nice fresh water uh, going into the tank. I'm just wondering what percentage of this actually is ice. You can see we've got ice here, ice, granite. There's uh, quite a major component of all this. And then, of course, we've got the wolframite as well. And are we going to have any surprises with this particular one? I don't know. I actually don't know. This biome, I mean. 
Like we we know what's over here on this biome. One, two, and would you believe it? Three anti-entropy thermo nullifiers. I didn't realise there was three. This definitely means this is where we're going to be coming with the uh, the steam water from the other place, so that we can cool it down. Uh, so we've got the rock crusher and the kiln. Really, those are two great bits of research. With the rock crusher, we can make uh, refined metals, but it's quite a serious loss compared to the smelting methods over here. Or uh, and with the kiln, we can make uh, uh, refined carbon and ceramics the rock crusher also makes sand but how are we gonna um chill old curie out here hmm. we, we need to we need to give her some nicer jobs i think one thing I want to make sure I do is get this ice out of the uh, the warming chamber here. Because if it all floods out and fills up over the top of the geyser, we could end up in a situation where we aren't getting any new hot gases. At zero degrees, that's pretty cool. But uh, still, what what's that doing to the snow here? Okay, Madam Curie is having a serious issue with her stress here. So we might just get her to hang around in town for a bit. I'm going to come to her priorities, remove everything that's not sort of hanging around let's let's go with operating that that should keep her inside the town a little bit more the base Oh, it took longer than expected, but we finally have the materials overlay for us. Look at this. I could show you the thing that I tried to show you way back when. We could we can move solid materials into the teleporter. If you weren't there for that episode, you won't have any idea what I'm going on about. But uh, something that is fairly easy to interpret is a big red line up here. Both uh, Miss Curie and uh, Boar over here have both got pretty bad stress on the go. So I'm trying to isolate some areas off. If I come along and go for the decor you can see that the ladder is causing some pretty serious issues over there but uh over here not so much uh boar's outfit and the microbe mush are causing some big troubles there the microbe musher unfortunately a thing that we need to keep hold of and i don't have any way of counteracting that well i say i don't have any way i am currently replacing all the tiles with granite because that gives a bonus but i said something about wanting to make an automatic dispensary yes let's go and dump this guy here and then um which where are we going to destroy it? I think I'm going to rip down this tile, this box, uh, and these two boxes here. You know, I'm so worried about the decor, I'm going to queue up the next interior design and artistic expression uh, researches here so Plank can get working on those. But I need to build these dispensers. I need to rip down these boxes. Okay, with this weird contraption set up here, I can come along to my automatic dispenser and say I would like everything, well, mostly everything, put into here, please. The things that I want to avoid are things like polluted dirt and the rot pile, because they all off-gas the seeds, because they, like, slowly die if they're put in the wrong place, and I don't I don't want things to die. I'm not going to pop the li liquefiables in there either, because I don't want to flood the place out. Is that everything? That might now be everything. Yes, yeah, I'll leave the oxalite there. And now, because I've clicked or, or the sweep only, I need to go around and sweep things. Would you believe? The seeds are going to get their own dumping spot here in the farm. So let's uh, start start putting down the orders. I, I would like all of this cleared up, please. Especially this stuff here that we've just dropped on the side. That seems to be the theme today. It took a lot longer for people to come and make a delivery here than I was expecting, but finally things are being dropped off. They are instantly being thrown down on the floor. Our duplicates can come along and pick this stuff up. Because it doesn't have a sweep order, they won't go and put it back in the dispenser. This means that we can collect all of our materials and keep them all in one spot. Uh, Ooh, just just like that and then they all get used nicely okay this is this is great this is great the, the centralized storage unit it's what it's what life's all about every time that i follow miss curie around boar just spikes in uh, stress i don't even know what he's up to to make it happen if i wasn't here he wouldn't have the uh, the center of attention for the five percent but it would still be minus ten percent how does he climb up so high i just i don't understand Okay, so no matter what, Boar is just getting stressed when I'm not watching. Thankfully, we've had a couple of researches roll in, so we can start putting in some nice things. This is Boar's cot down this end, so let's uh, try and poke it all up around there. Uh, is there anything else we could do that's even nicer? I suppose we could put some moulding up, but I don't know whether our duplicates can even reach up there. We we've got to do it. We've got to do it. The theory here is because they, because all the duplicates spend a, I don't know, a third of their time in bed, it doesn't quite work out that way, but they're supposed to spend a third of their time in bed. If we go ahead and make all of this real nice for them, then they, they have good, good feelings for the rest of the day, right? 
Oh, boy. We knew it would happen at some point. He's hit 100% stress. I was hoping to kind of head this off, but uh, he's crying now. I don't know what the ugly crying actually does for him or for us or what. Um, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't actually tell us. Decor, minus 30. Well, that's, that's kind of okay. Oh, yeah, look at that. People don't like it. But is it making any liquids? That, that's a question. I think he might be about to cry himself into an accident. I've watched him climb in and out of this toilet three times now. Uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna, like, bladder 100%. How long is this gonna take? Who knows? He gets into the toilet, the bar goes across, and then sometimes about here... Oh, no, no, we're good. Look, the, the, the stress has dropped by 10%. He should be okay now. Whilst we watch Madame Curie make the world a little bit of a better place to live in here, making the bedroom a little bit more decorated, I'm going to take this moment right here to thank some other people making the world a little bit better to live in. Scrolling up your screens right now are the names of my patrons. These are the guys and girls taking the time out of their day, but more importantly, taking the money out of their wallet to make sure I can carry on doing what I am doing here. Hopefully bringing a little bit of sunshine to your life. So if you felt that burst of sunshine coming from them indirectly via me, please do take a moment right here to thank them. And I am going to say thank you very much from the bottom of my heart, guys. It really does come in handy during my current lifestyle situations. We have been somewhat blessed. Pipex, two of them, I'm definitely taking those. Also, looking over here at the different eggs that we have got available to us, if we come down to Critter Egg, we have also got a Stonehatch egg suddenly available. This is all the way down here. I don't know how this hatch managed to drop it, but uh, we've got we got a Stonehatch egg there. I'm going to try and move him over when we're ready, when he gets uh, born, and feed him off of the uh, the goodness that is available inside here. But yeah, the, with these Pips, uh, Pips have this amazing ability to be able to plant seeds that are just left on the floor which means we might be able to make a sweet uh, sleet wheat farm in this cold area over here that'd be great we are winning the battle of stress it's down to 54 percent that's uh, actually very good compared but there are some other battles we are losing mostly to do with temperature this water here is pretty much all of the warmth that we've got coming into the base and that is not good enough as you can see we are losing millwood as we watch uh this does mean that i can put some sleep wheat in oh, in fact no it doesn't because it's not cold enough ah uh, we get we get to pick one or the other and we're at that horrible awkward situation where neither are working Okay, I'm going to uproot all of these sleep wheat. There turns out to be no reason to have them here because we're going to try and put them over here. But more importantly, if we go to the research, you can see I've changed from doing the uh, the sanitation and uh, what else had I had it set up for before I decided to jump away. Uh, but anyway, from the, from the sanitation and stuff to the heating because really we need that space heater and we need it now. One of the other reasons we need to bring the temperature up, briar seeds. 10 to 30 degrees C they can survive in. It's not, it's minus 11. Like, minus 11. My guys are sleeping in minus 11. I'm not about that. That's bad, bad stewardship right there. Always a sad day when you realise you have to make a bunch of mush bars. I just don't think we're going to be able to have enough food for this evening. Our lice loaf is uh, suffering, suffering badly. Still waiting for the research. Thankfully, look, we're very nearly there. In fact, there it is. Bam. Just just came in. Beautiful. So I'm going to come along here. We need a utility space heater. Just just literally pop one there, one there. Let's go, let's go for two. Why not? Uh, and then I'm going to have a manual generator in the middle and a bunch of batteries there and there. Okay, that should do for a little while, but who knows how long that little while will actually be until it makes it all good. Okay, here we go. The heating has started. How long until it transfers through? Well, we're on cycle 55 at the moment. Uh, I've got a feeling it's going to be a while. And the good news is one duplicate can keep ahead of the two space heaters that power demands. Not by much. And there is a lot of carbon dioxide down here. So there, there could be some problems here, but it's feeling good. Be good at some point to move these algae terraria down a few blocks. Maybe replace these with some airflow and let all this carbon dioxide come out and be uh, be consumed. It's going to take a while for that to happen, though. I put some build orders down to remind myself to do this, and along uh, comes Miss Curie to do it all. Okay, fair enough. We'll, we'll just let this one happen now, then, I suppose. We're not even charged at the batteries. Sickening. I'd just like to take a moment to uh, observe a miracle. We, we have no long commutes warning. What, what's going on here? I've got no warnings at all. Is my base running well? 
No, no, I don't believe it. Another piece of research has just rolled in, as well as another starvation warning. We've got an automation overlay. We've got this brand new thing available to us. If we can get rid of that and click this button over here. Automation, everything that, well, pretty much everything. As you can see, it's, everything's got a little bit of a um, an input here. This will all take a bit of automation. We've got, got down here the access to some wires, some switches, duplicate motion sensors, stuff like that. We're currently missing any refined materials which is what we need to make the wire but it does mean at some point we can start making things a little bit more efficient so we're not constantly constantly running out of batteries end of cycle 56 we're actually in the positive numbers here are we going to make it up to 10 i'm not sure yeah 10 is what we need it's, it's going to take a while to get that Ooh, look this one just became viable again oh great that's that's pretty much mission accomplished right there cool someone just made a mess oh no what is it why 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 all the toilets are down that's why okay um Obviously, my priorities are wrong somewhere along the line. Okay, let, let, let's try and get some of these cleaned up. Unfortunate, they all went down together. Okay, we'll, we'll have to figure something out with that. Oh, look at all the, po the f food poison in here now. Ah... The only way really to get rid of food poisoning on water, I mean, we could wait a while because normal water does die, but as you can see, polluted water, this will just keep on spawning more. We need to, oh, first, can we mop that polluted? We can mop that polluted water. Okay, that, that will help a little bit as long as the germs don't come over this far. Uh, they should be on the very edge of this, dying faster than they can reproduce, maybe, hopefully, I hope, I hope. We've got zero germs here. Is it gonna, is it gonna splash further across? Yes, yes, it splashes further across. It is dying very quickly, but we, we got problems. Okay, the polluted water got mopped up. Hopefully this is now just dropping. Um, I, I really hope this is not going to spread any further. What is it? When we get to a thousand, does it jump across? That's what I'm going to assume here. Let's let's see how far how high it goes before we do get some spread. Yeah, yeah, any thousand pushes over okay that's something to bear in mind for the future man I, I really hope these are dying quick enough though oh this sleep wheat is great ah oh, it's five not minus five okay i mean that's that's kind of cool we'll just wait and see what happens with this guy i mean that something bad's gonna happen when this gets very warm down here but we'll see we'll see what happens you might be wondering what the purpose of the automation layer was well actually as you can see after this temperature modulation or research that we've got here that gave us access to the space heater there is a thermo sensor i want to skip that because if we have a look at the space heater it's trying to warm up to 70 degrees now 70 degrees it's not it's not instant death for the duplicants but it's very hot they'll start complaining around 35 maybe 40 degrees so i want to be able to uh, attenuate this to whatever temperature is going on around and that is why we need this automation layer not that i think we're actually going to be able to get to the point where we go ah we're at 20 degrees now let's stop because even now with this running for a couple of cycles three cycles in fact completely untethered uh it we're still not that warm so hopefully the time down the bottom here will take on a fair bit of warmth and then re-radiate that as time goes on best do i'm down to my last 600 ca uh, calories barely got these terrarium in place that we were putting down earlier and look already the carbon dioxide is on its way out of here we have got some flow beautiful I remember back in time a little bit, I was working on the sanitation uh, research here so that we could work towards some better toilets, but we got interrupted with all the other stressful inducing things that we've been trying to deal with here. But one of the things that came through with the actual toilet itself is this mesh tile. This enables us to be able to put down some tiles on the floor that the water can go through, but the duplicates can walk on top. The great thing about that, let's see if anybody's got it. No, not at the moment. It means that we can avoid soggy feet. There we go. 10 stress per cycle just for getting your feet and walking through a little layer like this. So let's let's try and avoid that if we can. So I've now got access to the insulated tile. I'm not sure which research it came with. Not the HVAC. There must have been one beforehand. Let's have a look and see where it came from. Temperature modulation. The same place that we got the space heater from. This insulated tile is going to go at the top here so that we can separate this door from this big old block of cold. Because I've got a feeling maybe that's what's sucking all of the temperature out of here. I don't know for certain, but that's what I'm going to go with. You might look at this and go, Twitchy, surely all the cold gases around are also causing a little bit of trouble. And yes, actually, 
a little bit of trouble is being caused by these. But compared to how much trouble is being caused by the solid tiles, it's next to nothing. The way to figure it out is we've got this thing called uh, specific heat capacity. It says you can hold so much energy per unit of mass. Now most things have about the same. This, this is not really true, but we'll go with that. Most things have about the same. Uh, and having a look at the tiles, you can see that this is uh, has a mass of 200 kilograms as opposed to the gas, which is two kilograms. 200 is a lot more than two, meaning there can be a lot more heat held in the solid things or a lot more cold that needs to be warmed up in the solid things uh, than there is in the gas. That's my theory anyway, at, at least until we have more firm control of the gases around here. It's the same reason that I've put two solid tiles next to this hot polluted oxygen vent. Not that I actually think they're going to make amazing heat sinks here, but they're just there to hold on to a little bit more warmth, try and pass it on to all this debris on the floor and hopefully pass it on to the gases. Oh, talking of gases, we've got a whole bunch of water melting here. I think I might even try and mop that. Can't mop this one too much. I mean, eventually all this will melt and let it drop down. So I think we'll be fine. Oh, our stone hatchling is almost cracked. Uh, maybe we'll get to that today. It'll be very awkward to try and remind people where it came from next episode. Taking the insulation idea just a little bit further, I've come around and insulated both the, from these blocks over here, but also all of this cold gas that was flowing in and has actually flooded our farm out with polluted oxygen. Hopefully, yes! Hopefully this means we've now got all of the millwood being warmed up and we have done it in... I'm going to say nine cycles. That took nine cycles. That, that, that's how long that took. But something else we've been doing in the meantime is getting this rock crusher going. I want to turn some of this copper ore into copper. I'm going to go with 10 for now. It seems like a good round number to be done. And of course, we now need to wait for tomorrow. But look, we've also got eggshell into lime. I would like all of that, please. As much eggshell into lime as we can. Eggshells being produced up here from uh, hatches when, when they crack out of their egg and are born we get ourselves some eggshell we can turn that into lime which will eventually be used for steel but not immediately Connolly has learned a new achievement but, but we're all asleep how can we earn a new achievement let's have a look down here hatch a new critter morph oh does this mean hang about zero units sat check that, that there he is stone hatchling we we need you we need you quite badly gonna go as far as completely changing our focus here because hatches they take they take a lot of organic materials to keep going so i would now like to stone hatch and stone hatchling feed off the igneous rock great okay stone hatchling great we're gonna end up with some hatches in there anyway but i think i'm okay with that oh beautiful we're gonna we're gonna make the transition to stone hatchling we're gonna be able to feed everything on igneous rock which we're gonna probably make from chilling down all this magma up here I mean, nice to drop a whole load onto this ice, right? But uh, that's that's a situation that'll cause many problems very quickly. Oh, look, the baby pips are out, the pip squeaks. Ah, oh, that, that's great. We've got to try and keep them away from our seeds because they will come and steal a seed and then try and find a natural tile somewhere to go and plant them all on. There's not too many that they've got access to. But there are a few. All right, one last thing to do just to wrap this all up. I want to come into the automation. I want to get the thermo sensor, and I want to drop that down. Yeah, online with these guys here. I, I gave up with the uh, the sleep wheat inside the warm room here. We, we've got we've got like infinite cold over here, or at least it can be infinite cold over here. We might as well make use of that, and then keep the the uh, the millwood going here. Yes. Oh, these, guys, these guys are going to cause a lot of trouble at some point. You, you know it, but we, we, we need to keep them somewhere safe. But I'm not really sure where we could keep them. Away from the lava. That, that would probably be a good one. Oh, did you guys hear that? Oh, that's amazing. Anyway, we are very close to getting this thermo sensor done. The automation is quite simple. If we come into this one, you get the red light. You also get a green light. Most machines, when they have a red light, will stop. Most machines, when they get a green light, will do the thing. Where do we get the signals from these lights? Well, of course, we get them from the sensors up here. At the moment, if it is underneath 20 degrees, it will be sending a green signal. Of course, if it gets above that at any point, it will change to red and stop the heat flowing but with that i am going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure ladies and gentlemen we got a fair bit done today we managed to get 
the heating sorted so we, we wouldn't starve to death. We got people's morale sorted and had ourselves a nice little tidy up. I will see you guys next time where we finally, maybe, if we can, got to get around to making the toilets a nicer place. Change over to the the water system rather than using dirt indeed replace all outhouses and wash basins in your colony with lavatories and sinks is the one we're going to be aiming for but we have just done red light green light the automation advancement well i will see you then when we're going to do that bye